Hey, what's up? What if I told you the key to success with your small business is to become a better choreographer, right? And I'm not talking about dance moves of which I am the worst in planet Earth, right? <laughs> hey, my name is Joshua Latimer. And if you're a local business owner, here are six tweaks you can make to generate more money for yourself. And they're a little bit counterintuitive. First, a super quick story. Actually, about five years ago, maybe six years ago, I spent a whole bunch of money to get mentorship from Russell Brunson, which I've mentioned on this channel. And what was so fascinating is he told me one strategy that generated me $250,000 in 30 days and saved my fledgling company. And it was out of the box, but it was simple at the same time, right? You know, we were trying to sell our software, you know, one piece at a time, one subscriber at a time. And he had me build an information product, sell that instead. And then the software came as like a free trial bonus with it. And I won't get into the nuance of why that worked, but it did work in a big way. And so just rearranging my offer that little uh, changed everything, right? So what do I mean choreography? Well, first of all, if you are a small business owner that loves God, family, country, and capitalism, this this is the YouTube channel for you. That's called the War Plan Briefing. That's what we call these videos. And my goal is to help you go faster. So let's get into my list of six things. The first thing you want to do to make more money is to level up your choreography. You got to realize that in small business, everything is choreography. I have a t-shirt that says marketing is everything. Everything is marketing. And that's true. And what I actually mean by that phrase is choreography. It's not so much if you do something yes or no, it's how do you do each thing inside of your business? You know, if I ask, if I surveyed 10 business owners and said, Hey, do you answer your phone? All of them would say yes, but there's going to be a massive difference difference between how they answer their phone. Was it one ring or two rings or did you call them back the next day? There's so much nuance in business from the first point of contact to the way that you price your stuff to the way that you repeatedly follow up to the way that you deliver your service, whatever that is. And then the way that you ascend people to your higher ticket stuff or upsell or cross sell. Uh, and by the way, upsells are different than cross sells. Maybe I'll make a video on that. There's so much choreography that goes into the customer life cycle. So uh, I'll give you a couple of ideas here when it comes to getting referrals. You know, getting more referrals is really good because getting a referral, your close rate goes up. The average ticket usually goes up. The buying resistance is lower because they're borrowing the trust from the person that referred them. So we want more, right? Well, how do you get referrals right now? Exactly how? Specifically how? If I flew you to Texas to Warplane Studios and said, teach us in 20 minutes exactly how you level up your referrals, what would you say? Would you need a whiteboard? Is there actual structure to it? Is there choreography to it? Is there an exact script that you say? You know, when they first contact you, do you ask them then? When you go out to do your pricing or give them your estimate, do you do it then? Well, when you go deliver your services, do you do it then? And if you do, how do you do it exactly? What is said exactly and when is it said? You know, when it comes to referrals, you want to ask for them in a clever way at the perfect time. You know, most companies just casually say, hey, if you know anybody else that could use us, we'd really appreciate it. And that's kind of it. And that's not effective because it's bad choreography. Choreography. I'll give you, I'll walk you through just a hypothetical scenario. Let's say that you are a window cleaning company and you go to the homeowner's house and you do the job, right? When should you ask? Well, you should ask for the referral immediately after the customer acknowledges how great you just were. So it's probably towards the end of the job when you're asking the, the client, hey, did we meet and exceed your expectations today? And the client says, oh yeah, it looks amazing. You guys are great. Perfect. Can you do me a favor? That's the moment when you ask. So that's the when. That's the when part of the choreography. But then we want to even go deeper and look at the nuance beneath that and how do we ask it? Well, most companies, uh, the company asks for referrals. You know, here at ABC Home Service, we rely on referrals. Can you give us a, a referral? Well, a better way to do it would be for your employee, the person who just cleaned the windows, the person who's boots on the ground with the customer could say, oh, perfect. Can you do me a favor? My name's Nate and we're doing a contest this month uh, based on referrals and I really want to win. So, you know, would you mind give, giving us a five-star review? So that's better choreography. It's very simple. But what if that was happening every day forever in your business? Would it make you more money? The answer is yes, it would make you a ton more money, right? Then it comes to reviews. How exactly do you get reviews? How do you get a bigger percentage of your clients to leave you a, a review? Um, people are willing to, but it's kind of annoying. So again, Again, it's when do we ask, how do we ask, the choreography, the nuance with all that. When it comes to upselling, when it comes to your scripting, when it comes to building trust 
with a customer in general on that initial phone call, all of these are opportunities for you to choreograph something special. And all this can be done by using our brain, which is why I commonly say on this channel, we're always going to make more money with our brain than we ever will with our back. Can I get an amen, right? We, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the first thing. The second tweak would be to create what's called a decoy offer, a decoy offer offer, right? If you go to uh, the movies, you know, the actual movie theater, and you look at their pricing where they have $12 tubs of popcorn right, and $6 snicker bars, um, there's so much interesting pricing psychology that happens at a movie theater, but there's really pricing psychology that needs to happen in your business right now. All of us should be doing this because you'll make more money. And without doing a whole video on it, here's the kind of nuts and bolts of it. When you give pricing to a client, give them the most expensive thing first. First, and that will anchor them and then work your way backwards, right? In general, over a long enough time horizon, it's going to yield a better result for you. If you just sell your services as a la carte, don't do that. Only sell packages and bundles and then present the most expensive package first. If, if you have like three packages right now, maybe consider creating an additional one that's twice as much or three times as much as your current most expensive one and add in some other stuff, right? And we show them that offer. And even if they don't want it, you could even say, you know, honestly, this $5,000 package, I don't think you need this one right now. You can scratch it off, scribble it off, which builds trust with you and the client but it still makes your rest of your offers look better. Are you picking up what I'm throwing down? It's another example of choreography, but create a high ticket decoy offer and its sole purpose is to make your existing packages look more attractive. They've done studies where they take, <laughs> like, like if you if you wanna meet girls and you're a single guy and you take an ugly friend with you, your your chances go up. This is proven, it's kind of weird, right? Because our, our brain is hardwired to kind of compare the two things that are right in front of us or the three things that are right in front of us. And so if you give people a yes or no opportunity, like do you wanna buy my stuff or not? That's not good. You wanna give them an either or, opportunity and starting with the most expensive one to anchor them your sales will go up your average ticket will go up you'll make more money this is not hard again it's brain money people it's brain money okay third <laughs> third tweak is to make sure that you quote everything so in a home service company scenario it's common that people will contact you and want a price for like one thing hey give me a price to clean my gutters, for example. Well, you might offer six or seven different services and that's just one of them. Well, the rookie business owner will go over and give them a price to clean their gutters and the veteran uh, successful business owner will go over, give them a quote for every single thing that the company does, bundle it into packages and kind of do all the other things I just said. And it's really important that you quote everything for a whole bunch of reasons. Number one, now you have a record of it and you can market to these people later. They might not need the other thing right now, but they might in six months and now we know what it's going to cost. Number two, people are going to buy more stuff from you. They're totally going to, they just didn't know that you did the other three things and the fancy other thing. Uh, but once they know that you do, they'll buy, which means your average ticket will go up, your profits will go up and you're going to be crushing it. Let's recap so far. So we have number one, level up your choreography, the way and the when and the how you do everything you're already doing to take it up a notch. Number two, create a high ticket decoy offer. And number three, quote everything. Okay. we got three more. Uh, the fourth one here is supply and demand pricing. This is a major problem with smaller broke service business owners because they kind of wear it as a badge of honor when they get booked out, you know, six or eight weeks booked out during their busy time. It feels like this weird security blanket, like, oh, I'm going to at least have groceries for eight weeks, right? And so it feels good to be like, oh yeah, I'm booked a month out, but you're losing like massive amounts of profit by not adjusting your prices. So your prices need to float up and float down with the demand curve in your market for whatever it is that you do, you know, for us in Michigan, when I had a cleaning company, you know, we had like a, a 12 week window where we made like 70% of our money. It felt like, and maybe it wasn't that high, but it was this huge bell curve. And during this bell curve, when everybody's calling you and everyone wants to be on the schedule, we have to ratchet up your prices and it's okay if you close less deals. Uh, and there's lots of mathematical provable ways why it's okay if you if you close less deals because you're going to make way more profit. Did you know for a typical local business, a 20% price increase can equal a 100% profit increase? Okay, I won't get into why, but you got to understand every extra dollar you charge on top of your current prices now, pretty much all of that dollar goes to you, the owner. And so if you're if I'm looking at a whole year. 
and the financials of a company, you know, there's there's these opportunities at these peaks of these bell curves to, to literally extract tens of thousands of free dollars to add to your profit when the year's over. Uh, so keep that in mind. And besides, once your schedule lightens up again, you can lower the prices back down to your normal price, go back to the people that said, no, you're too expensive. And some of them will still buy from you. It's awesome. Okay. And the fifth thing is to market to your past clients. Most people don't do this enough. And when I say most people, I'm talking like 90% or more of small business owners for some reason are scared to email and interact with their past customers. It's madness to me. They have no problem hiring an SEO company from Pakistan and paying a thousand dollars a month to them, but they won't just send a text message or, or a do some phone calls or an email sequence to their past customers. Are you crazy? The, the, the gold is in your list. You know, it's called your house list in the internet marketing world. You have this book of people that know, like, and trust you that have given you money in the past. And you haven't even scratched the surface on the value of that relationship unless you're actually marketing to them forever, right? And the goal of having an email list, if you have a local business, is to make money with the list. And if people unsubscribe, that's great. I'd rather they leave or buy. What we don't want is to not know if they're going to leave or if they're going to buy. And so I think people get way too intimidated. Purge your list. Put the unsubscribe button at the top. Say, hey, we're going to be emailing you some insanely epic last minute special deals between now and the end of the year. If you don't want to get those, get out of here. Boom, get them gone. Because the people that are left are going to make you tons of money. And and then last but not least, definitely not least, is invest in your brain. That's the sixth tweak to make more money is you have to level up your thinking. You know, making money is a mental game. It, it really, truly is. You know, success in general is predicated on your mindsets, your skill sets, and your network. That's a good kind of three-part thing to remember. And when you level up your mindset and you level up your skill sets and you level up the people that you're around, really good things happen. So stop being scared to invest in your brain. Stop being scared to buy a program or a course or something. I mean, when you get stuff in your brain and it's permanently in there, no one can take it from you now. You have it forever. And the lifetime ROI on leveling up your mindsets and your skill sets and your network is incalculable. Will, how do you say that word? Incalculable. Incalculable. Yeah, I think you get what I'm saying. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, will you subscribe and share it with a friend who needs uh, some encouragement? I'm hoping that this is helping you go faster. That is what I want for you. And uh, type a comment below. I'll reply to you. Until next time, see you in the next video.